Welcome back to the channel. We're here, Carlsbad, California, at the KBS Golf Experience. I'm in familiar surroundings of a nice, tall workshop. It's got the smells, it's got the sounds, it's got the feel. I'm going to get my golf clubs made from scratch here, just exactly how that process will be on tour. Let's check it out. Good to see you. The Onion Master here at the KBS Golf Experience. We've gone through this whole process and we've got to this point. Now the irons are going to get built. We've done the wedges. Great success. Loved it. Talk to me about what happens to someone's golf clubs that either are sent here or someone who goes through this process and how it works. How do you ensure these are going to be perfect? So we start off basically with that meticulous detail of setting everything up correctly. I always think of like a good chef doing, getting all his ingredients set in front of him right so you can see, we've got your build over here. We've got your club heads ready to go. You're gonna do some custom BB and FCO ferrules. We've got your grips with the round and we've got the, uh, the ones that's not round set aside because you're doing those for the wedge heads. So basically just to explain that on my 60 degree, I'm gonna play that a little bit open. I'm gonna play the head hooded. I'm gonna hit a lot of different shots. A round grip for anyone out there, if you literally look down this bad boy, there is no ridge. The rest of the grips, I like to have a reminder, a ridge, so I can feel where my hands go. Quite old school. This is a big move for me, I gotta be honest. We're gonna talk about the decision process and how I got here, but I'm going for some Hogan-inspired and maybe KBS golf experience with the color inspired. We've got two changes on that. We've not only got that set up for you. So we've got all the club heads set up. We've got all shafts set up in order. You can see we're going from three iron down to the wedges down here. We've got them all set up, so we're ready to go. Everything's prepped in line so we can start the process in the correct order. And this works just so we know the handoff. We have you as the fitter who goes through it. Then everything moves in here, and my man Billy is going to be whipping these things up. He's getting all the swing weights ready to rock. He's going to be putting the due care and attention required to just make these things absolutely money. One of the big advantages we have here over most places is you did the fitting 20 feet away from here, and we're in the build shop here. so. Billy and I can coordinate very easily with each other, having, if he sees an issue when he's building it off of my notes, he can come find me and we can coordinate so we make sure the builds are as precise as possible. Like all great restaurants, this thing follows a process. You've got it laid out, you've got your ingredients, you've got your herbs, you're ready to go. Let's put it together and make something great. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Before we get going here, the shafts are lined up, the heads are ready to rock, you know all that. In a normal build, we'd build three to pitching wedge right the way through the set. We're gonna do this a little differently for the purpose of you guys. We're gonna go through one build with my seven iron and show you what goes into that one club. Then, because this is gonna be my gamer set, we're gonna give these guys a little bit of space, get out of their kitchen and let them get this absolutely perfect. I want these to be so right. So we'll talk through one and then they get to do them. So where Billy's gonna start off with the build is he's gonna prep the tip of the shaft. We're gonna do your seven iron today. So he's going to go in, go over to the grind wheels and the, and the sanding belts, and he's going to get the tip prepped. So the so tip grind, like we say, that gets the epoxy so that it sets, right? Gives it something to adhere to. Yeah, this kind of provides an adhesive, like a abrasive substance spot so the grip, uh, the glue can hold onto the shaft very well. Talk to me so, about this now. So what he's doing is he's grabbing a piece of just simple fishing wire and he's using that, stuffing it down in the shaft so he can use that. That kind of takes the place of the epoxy in the dry pit. So the interesting part about this, and you pre-check my lie angles, right? Because if, I mean, I play close to standard on what KBS standard is, but how he's getting the length now, you equate the grip cap, but also if someone is extremely flat or extremely upright, it changes the length, doesn't it, slightly? It does. He did uh, the club before, he made two lines at the top. Tell me what that's yeah, for. So I've never seen that before. He's making his length line first. So let me just hold fire here as well, because this is unique. The housing that this sits in, in the position this goes at, takes it from the center of the sole, right? That's correct. And not to get in the way of a craftsman here, but you're going to cut minus an eighth of an inch, because I'm using tall velvets, and there's an eighth, right? So you'll cut end of yeah, your... That's all figured into how this has been set up. Okay. Crack we on. all account for that. When I have, when we built all the shafts out in the bay for the fitting, 
we set it up so it's cut and built the same way it's from the there. So it's literally just a handoff to the chef. It's just hands off. So if he has his numbers. <laughs> Thank you. In that the chef having all his ingredients ready to go. So this is interesting. Talk to me about this bit. So what he's done first is he's actually kind of pre-measuring the frequency, measuring, making sure the shaft is where it's supposed to be. So he'll get an initial number here. He's measured the shaft. And then we have a clamp set up so he can measure it from the shaft being on it, not just like mine out in the fitting bay, you measure with a grip on. So we get the matching frequencies from the fitting bay to the build shop back here. The interesting thing about my fitting, and I'll put a link to that now up in the top corner, but the interesting thing about my fitting is you said that even though they were S-Flex golf shafts, the frequency played a little firmer than the set I have, right? Now, another huge part of this, and you see Billy's getting into this and giving it the exact, we talk about puring and we talk about flow. Billy, talk to us a little bit about what that is. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just flowing the shaft, uh, flowing, puring, spine aligning, they're all pretty much similar uh, goals. So what we're trying to do is get the shaft not to oscillate when it's loaded. And by doing that, I can follow a line on here, make sure that's going straight up and straight down. If it's oscillating, I will turn the shaft and turn the head until I get it to where I know it's perfectly going straight up and straight down each time. Then I'll do a check 271, that's the same number I had last time. And I go over here and I put this line on the top. So when I build the clubs, I know exactly where it's gonna go back to. So the frequency comes on, it gives us a spot of a standard between the fitting bay and here. That's the main thing that we're gonna use that frequency for is a way to make a standard between it. So you see, he just cut the club to length. Now we're gonna start to go through the swing weight prep. You talk about dry weighting. This is where we do the dry weighting, okay? So swing weight is the balance point. You got a 14 inch fulcrum point from the head and it's gonna be a letter and a number. I talk so much about this on my channel. It's so critical because if the swing weight is off, the set is off, right? Exactly. So you can see he's actually using your grip on the swing weight scale. With the one tape that with I With a piece of one tape, tape that you're gonna have. So we're making this dry fit as close to the finished fit as possible. So he'll even, so you can see he's dropping a weight in the head. So now he's swing weighting it, yeah. To find the head weight to give you the, now this is exactly what happens on tour. And that is one thing that strikes me about this. It's called KBS golf experience. I mean, now you could be going to a point, this is a tour experience. Absolutely. You know, we want the tour build. What's, what's the difference between coming here and going somewhere else is all these little extra steps when we do our tour build are in the right spot. You see he even attached the ferrule so we get it all the way down and everything is as it would be in the finished build and our dry build. We always want to go back and recheck everything to make sure those specs don't get too far off. At this stage now, this is the epoxy. Um, that is DP810, right? Okay, so that it's going to take to dry how long, David? Well, it's going to cure for about an hour okay. before we even really touch it. That's everything that I see on tour. And then you put in, yeah, you've got quick center in there, which ensures the golf shaft goes perfectly in the center, right? So you go and do all this flowing, you do all this prep work. I mean, what are you have just done there with quick center and the beads is essential. Just making everything as tight as possible. And you'll notice, like you said, you pointed out the epoxy. We're not using the regular epoxy. We are using stuff you guys use on tour trucks because we don't we don't want there to be any problems with with the epoxy coming apart or coming undone or any lower quality. How much room do you allow for glue weight in the swing weight? Is this what quarter swing so, weight light at the moment? So we always we always again always checking those swing weights and stuff, and we account for it as we go along. So when Billy's building that, it's part of one of the things that he's doing in the process to account for that. Usually about one to two points of a swing weight. There's those uh, funky Hogan ferrules going on. <laughs> and everything's been lined up now with the flow, right? So the flow is lined up. And I'll talk to okay, got it, right, yeah. My club assembled. Whether I assemble them or our GM comes in and does some work for us, He'll know that's where it's going to go. Yeah. Position. Bang down. That's not right. That's right. Okay. Got it. It's, it's just a quality control. So really what? Hammering home so you get the sound. The other thing There's I want. a particular sound that, yeah. I, that I do listen for. Definitely. The other thing I want to call out here 
you mix the DP810 quite a bit because the more you mix it, then your drying time comes down a little bit, right? It can go so, for about a minute. Yeah. You know, and then I'll, you see I'll rotate the... Yeah. I didn't want so, folks just so thinking you were mixing, mixing, mixing. There's a reason you mix that that long. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you can well, see... Just, no, it's, so you've got acetone on the ferrule there before the... That's just even. alcohol. Okay. It's a clean okay, okay. to uh, remove any residual glue or yeah. epoxy that's left. After we set these up, maybe it dry. We'll turn the ferrule. Now I'll use a acetone on the ferrule okay. itself. And Sweet. It helps melt it and, and just polishes it all. Sweet. You got me panicking about these. You've done this before. <laughs> this perfect. Yeah. I know where it's going. We're good. I like it. I need that in the movie there, you know. <laughs> you need that? <laughs> and then, yeah, it's just the process of each one goes through the same same process. And if I get to point to where uh, I dole them and I, uh, something goes wrong or there, I, it's offset, I don't have a problem pulling it apart. Yeah. I build it up fresh again. You know, I'm not going to send something out because it's just a yeah. kick off. I, I want it right. You know, a big step for me, boys, and it's okay seeing it in here. The, the ferrules and the colors, that's big for me. The next thing, pimping out the shaft in the black, that's big for me. But look, I mean, this is the way we go here. This is the way black we go. Ferrules, <laughs> the, to introduce them to Don't be scared when you come in to here to do the custom stuff. Yeah. Have a custom ferrule. You know, we have other things, the custom stamping and stuff like it's that. It's easy we can to do get well. sucked into it, right, Absolutely. when you come in here. How many times in your life are you going to get a set of clubs custom built for you? Take advantage of them. Yeah. You know, so. I like it. Once we get uh, this point, now the club gets its time to sit and dry. So we're going to let Billy build the rest of your set of clubs, and then we'll come back, and we will kind of show the finishing processes of everything. Okay. And one of the interesting things that I want to hit here that Billy can do for you, the retro build in KBS, David, maybe you can explain, or Billy, you can explain. You can have this even if you just send your golf clubs in. You can get this whole service, right? Absolutely. You can actually send your current clubs in. We pull them all apart. We reweight the heads. We measure them as best as we can to get those old heads to the specs exactly where we want them. And then we can put new shafts in and the go through the build process the same way you're seeing now with your current club heads, if you like. Okay, the club has dried, the seven iron is done, it's set. Now we're gonna come into a process that any great club builder makes look so simple. Obviously this is gonna be a brand new set of sticks. This is how you're gonna get it through. Take the scratches off by putting the tape on. But this process here of turning the ferrule, you're just looking to get that ferrule flush with the hosel. Looked so easy, that is a true onion master when it comes to building golf clubs. But I can tell you, many a golf club has been ruined at this stage in the process. Now you can see there's a slight misty color to that. Again, acetone is gonna clean it up. We're gonna get rid of any Sharpie marks we put in there and we're just gonna make this thing start to look pristine. At this stage of the build, it's all about having perfection. You're now almost putting the finishing touches on a golf club, even before you have the grip on there. Now you're wanting to make that look presentable, look where it is. Loft and Lyre, this golf club, as mentioned at the top, has been pre-done because of the lengths. We want to get the loft and die pre-done to make sure the lengths are good. We're going to have a check of that in a minute. But obviously on the way, everything in here works like a restaurant. You're moving to the gripping station first. For quality control purposes, I did each one the same exact spot. Okay. That way I know when I pull my tape off, it's not a half gram heavier or lighter or whatever. And you go just for that on a tall velvet, you go just for that decal on the bottom of the grip there. Correct. Well, all my grips, however I do it, I'll have a certain measuring point from point yeah. to point. Yeah. But I'll make sure that they're all consistent. And then you go laser method. You like that? I like that you're using one single tape. I love one single tape. It just helps accuracy to make sure the shaft is square to the head on the grip. Goes. Especially with the rib. Okay. For your purposes, I like to mark how many wraps are on there. Just in case it comes back to you for a regrip. Like me or if you're on the tour somewhere and yeah. you need something to regrip, the guy can pull out. Oh, he's got one rolling wrap on here. Quick story for you. We, uh, back in the day, used to make clubs for Darren Clark and then Clarkie would move over to play PGA Tour, European Tour. So what the club builders used to do in Europe is they would write a message on the grip 
the down the line. I've done a few of those too. PGA oh, was Tour. Appropriate, brother. Exactly. I wouldn't say these were appropriate. But the PGA Tour guy would get the message that was left on Clarky's grip when he got to the States. <laughs> I do that to uh, to our own of our guys a lot. I mean, that looks sick. Black, black, Hogan Farrell. It looks pretty sick. It's a step up from just the straight chrome finish. Yeah, 100%. I can feel it. This is where Billy is a master because putting these stickers on and getting them straight and square is very, very hard. How'd you tell how low down you go? He's done a thousand of them, so he just knows which step they're supposed to go on. And you can get, uh, I mean, look, your notebook here, mate, has got a thousand and one options on it already, right? Oh, this is a mini labels, custom labels from our custom X table to uh, red camo. Just depends on what you're looking for. Whatever you want. You customize that with your ferrules at all, pretty sure. He's got that done. We move into the next part of the process. Everything's been checked and rechecked for the clubs. They'll then go into the box and then we'll call the customer. Customer comes in and gets it to it. So you can see we've got the full, full process from start to finish. Every check is meticulous and detailed. There you have it, KBS, they've hooked me up like you wouldn't believe, and this could be your hookup too, with the box set coming exactly dialed for your game. Custom ferrules, custom shafts in the irons and the wedges. You've seen the process. Billy has put his touch on this. It is a tour experience, now in a box, ready for me to walk out. If you wanna get this for yourself, simply go to the link below in the description, the KBS Golf Experience here in Carlsbad, California. You can book in and have this yourself. Or alternatively, as we mentioned, you can send your current irons in for a retro build and they will fine tune them to your game. All that's left now is for me to go out and test these on the golf course and settle myself into them. So be sure to follow and subscribe and keep up with that action.